Hi, this is your host, Erin Reed. I'd like to welcome you to our call with today's guest, Marilyn Janae. Marilyn is a renowned prosperity mentor, an accomplished businesswoman, and owner of a company that served the corporate arena for 20 years. Marilyn overcame her own lack consciousness to create her former business that attracted the world's largest corporate clients and major media publicity. She did all this without marketing, advertising, or networking. She achieved all this through the use of her prosperity principles alone, and as she says, with the universe as her marketing department. Her achievements were the result of applying the prosperity laws that she now teaches in her Feel Free to Prosper program, a simple yet powerful lesson and mentoring program based on mental and spiritual laws that traditionally creates results within two weeks. Marilyn founded her program to mentor and teach others to become aligned with the universal laws and accept their right to prosper. She has helped thousands of students from around the globe and from all walks of life enjoy remarkable success. Marilyn's promise, and it is not a promise made lightly, is to show people how to manifest unexpected income and unexpected solutions to their most pressing problems in just two weeks. Thousands of people have applied her simple, fast, and practical techniques to gently create a new dominant thought in the subconscious mind and connect to their universal source of supply. Marilyn will take the mystery out of these esoteric laws and teach you how to put the universe on speed dial. I know we all want that. On today's call, you'll discover what these mental and spiritual laws really are. You'll learn why affirmations may not bring you results. You'll discover why you shouldn't try to create success. In fact, trying will never get you there. You'll learn why what you think is your source of income is really not your source of income. You'll discover the words that you are habitually using that are preventing your success. And most importantly, you'll learn the single most immediate thing you can do right now to increase your income. Marilyn, thank you so much for joining us today, and welcome to the call. Well, thank you, Erin, and uh, I love the way you put such feeling into my intro. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> it deserves it. It deserves it. We're so happy to have you here, and I know you have so much to share with us today. Can you begin by sharing with us um, what you believe to be the major turning point that allowed you to manifest your current level of success? Well, I'd much rather be teaching uh, than talking about myself, but I think it is important that your listeners who have or are not familiar with my teachings or haven't or who have not heard me speak before understand why I'm here today, what brought me here today, and why I um, am going to be here, why I'm here to help them awaken to abundance. Okay, to start with, uh, my parents were good people, but they had a very negative consciousness about money and about life. And that was the legacy I got from them, a struggle mentality. And I believe many of your listeners are going to be able to relate to that. So here I went out into the world with this consciousness of struggle and not being able to meet my needs. But something in my soul just drove me to find out what's going on here well, in this game of life. Why is it some people can succeed and accomplish in life and others cannot? And I was driven to study and I totally immersed myself in the teachings of the great, those great icons that came before us. And I'm talking about those legendary, brilliant masters of mental and spiritual science. I buried myself in their teachings and the literature, and I had some changes. I had some shifts, but I still wasn't at the point where I wanted to be. And where did I want to be? I, I wanted to make a mark in the world. I wanted to do something meaningful. I wanted to accomplish. I just know I didn't want to be like my parents. Now, there came a point when I was reaching a milestone age, which uh, I won't reveal that age, uh, and I said to myself, that's it. You know, I, I've had it. I'm, I'm going to do this. I'm going to have a breakthrough. And I really decided that I was going to take everything that I had learned. Now, does this, does this sound familiar? You learn it all. You read all the books. You have all the information. And it's in your head. But somehow you don't seem to be able to incorporate it into your everyday life. Well, that's the decision I made. And that's important. I made a decision, a firm decision that that's what I was going to do. I was determined. I said, I'm going to take these laws. I'm going to make them work. And I'm going to change my life. I'm going to overcome this, uh, this um, what I call a lack consciousness. And because I teach the power of words and how significant our words are, I, I don't like to use that P word, you know, the, the poverty word. 
well, let's say lack consciousness. It's a little softer. And I made the decision that I was going to do the homework and I'm going to succeed. And what I did is I took the essence of all of this great knowledge of the prosperity laws, of these universal laws, and I put it in very simple, very doable formats so that I could, I could easily apply them, use them. And I had my life-changing breakthrough. Now, understand I'm skipping over a lot of detail here for the sake of time, but I did have a major breakthrough to the point where I found myself with a new business. Now, remember, I, had create, I created something from less than nothing, but I found myself with this new business. It was actually in an industry that I didn't even know existed before that the universe handed me. And once I became aligned with that power that we're going to talk about tonight, and that power, that presence that knows the answer, it knows our destiny, it knows where we belong. Once I became aligned with that power, I ended up on the cover of the Los Angeles Times, <laughs> like, a, like a magic carpet ride, with my new business. It was a pioneer company that I created for the, for the special event industry. And in 20 years, again, skipping over a lot of detail, I'm going to tell you something literally. You might not think it's literal, but it is. I mean this, literally. In 20 years of having that business, I never advertised, I never marketed, I never cold called, I didn't join any trade organizations, I didn't network. And yet, my little one-woman company here in Los Angeles, where, of course, millions of, of people come to try to achieve their dreams, my little one-woman company attracted the biggest corporations in the world. But the universe handed me a business in an industry that is also most impacted by negative disasters and recessions. The special event industry, the hospitality industry, they were the first to be impacted. So I was knocked down several times. There was the Los Angeles riots, the Northridge earthquake, there were national recessions, and of course, 9-11. I kept getting knocked down, and it wasn't always easy. But those were the times that taught me the most. That taught me what worked and what didn't work. We either succumb to the outer circumstances, or we reach for that universal life jacket what I call universal life jacket. We learn to connect, and that's exactly what I did. What I didn't know in all that time, you know, you know, my 15 minutes of fame with all the publicity actually turned into a 20-year career, but I didn't know in all that time that I was being groomed by this universal power, and again, we'll talk about what that power is in, in a moment. I didn't know that I was being groomed to learn these laws so that one day I would teach and help others. Now, that didn't come into awareness until nine years ago, well, it's almost 10 years now, when I was encouraged to teach. And I had never even considered, you know, the, these laws, um, this was my passion. These prosperity laws were my passion, these mental and spiritual laws. But I never considered that, <laughs> that I would ever teach. It was, my goal was to help myself. I didn't know that I would ever be capable or have the ability to help others. But the doors started to open, and they opened naturally. And I said, um, okay, universe, if I'm supposed to teach these laws, then please give me a method. Give me the gift to be able to help others. Give me something simple, something easy that others can grasp easily and get results quickly so they don't have to go through my 40-year journey of study. And from that request was born a series of lessons called the Feel Free to Prosper program. I had never even been online. I hadn't been on a computer before, but I was like a kid in the candy store. <laughs> I didn't know there was such a thing as talking to people on the internet or social media or posts and threads on, you know, on forums, on networks and forums. And I started my network called the Feel Free to Prosper Network, and, and it, it was just magical. People started to come from the, for the lessons from all over the world, and testimonials flew in, and I was just absolutely amazed at what was happening but I knew without a doubt, I knew I was tuned in to my destiny. And this was like breathing to me. I couldn't stop if I wanted to. I, I did ask myself though, I said, you know, universe, how can I make a living doing this? <laughs> you, have to re you have to realize I was used to making big chunks of money from those corporate and convention events. I said, how can I make a living doing this? I, I didn't even know there was a coaching industry at the time. So I said, universe, give me a sign. Am I supposed to do this? Because I couldn't stop. As I, as I said, it was like breathing. And I knew it was coming from my soul, and I had to do this. But I had to make sense of it. Out of the blue came a fluke phone call. 
It wasn't even a business source. It was from a, a housewife in Los Angeles. And she called and said, I know someone who's looking for a home to rent for a week. And I said, well, you know, I'm in the special event industry. I don't rent homes for long periods of time. Uh, we might rent a, a home for a couple of hours for a corporate event, a mansion uh, for a big event. But you would need to call a real estate company if you need um, a, a lease for a week. And she said, no, it's for a party. <laughs> I said, a party for a week? And, and she said, you know, I really don't know anything about it. I'll have someone call you. And, you know, I, I just forgot about it. So I hung up and figured it was nothing. Half an hour later, I heard from a gentleman back east. It was a, a marketing company. And he said, someone just handed me your number. We have been looking for six months for the right mansion for our client for a promotion. And someone gave me your number. Well, that client was Campbell Soup. And they spent over the next three years over $450 million to promote to children. And I was their key vendor. I use these prosperity laws to manifest the most amazing locations for these promotions. There's a castle in England, East North Castle in England, the Hollywood mansions, uh, the island in the Caribbean. And, and you see what had happened. The universe said to me, you just keep doing what you're doing. You help people with your teachings. You'll be provided for. I'll take care of you. And that's exactly what happened. I did six promotions for Campbell's for three years, after which I told them I can't do that anymore. I said, I, I now have my new mission. And by the way, they took very little of my time, but I knew it was time to let go and to fully embrace my new life. So that was the cushion to help me build Feel Free to Prosper and Feel Free to Prosper took off. And I just pretty much released my former business because this is my mission. This is my sole mission in life. It's taking my experience my knowledge and bringing it to others so they can benefit. And that's the legacy I, I want to leave. I love that. I love the ease with which that came to you. And, you know, so many of us spend a lot of our time in struggle and just the journey that you just told us about. And I know there were so many more mini journeys within there, but it expresses that everything falling into place and you just being connected to you know, your truth and the universal life jacket and all those things. And, and it's just very exciting. And I know <laughs> I'm not alone when I'm like, oh, ooh, tell us more, tell us more. So well, Aaron, I, I'm gonna... I just want to say that I call that, I, if I may uh, just interject here, I call that synchronicity and guidance. So that's what it's all about is synchronicity and guidance. It's that tuning in, becoming aligned. And, and that's what I'm here to do tonight. I'm here to tune your listeners in to, to help them to become aligned with that presence and have faith in that presence that can do the same thing for them. I love it. And can you let us know and explain a little bit about what are the mental and spiritual laws that you talk about? Okay. Well, the universe as we know it and as we see it and experience it, it's not all there is. We know that. The universe is always in motion. It's a vibrating, pulsating, resonating, magnetizing force. And we also know that at the molecular level, everything is in motion, pure energy. So what we're talking about here is the pure, formless substance of the universe. Now, we can think of this in spiritual terms as God, higher power, spirit, universe. We can address it mentally as infinite intelligence, universal mind, divine mind, formless substance. Or we can think of it scientifically as energy or relativity. And some people like to take a giant leap into the area of quantum physics where it is known as the field of all possibilities. Now, this is really just a great age that we live in, a great age of discovery. The mental, the spiritual, the scientific aspect of the laws of life, any or all of it is there for the asking. Now, this power, however you perceive it, is the source of everything we desire. It is awaiting our recognition and will create and attract and guide us to inspired action. It will magnetize and mold itself to whatever form we desire if we align ourselves with it through certain laws called universal laws. What are these laws? Well, we know that there are laws of physics, laws of chemistry, laws of mathematics, and most people are not aware uh, uh, of the laws that govern the mental and spiritual realms, the creative laws of the universe that govern our existence. Or you may know something about them, but don't know how to relate to them or how to use them. That's, of course, very common. So how do we know these laws exist or that this universe or power exists 
aside from any intuitive feeling that it it does or because Marilyn here says it does. <laughs> we know because of its responsiveness. I'm going to say that again. We know because of its responsiveness by the results we experience when we align ourselves with it. Now, I'm going to tell you from my own personal experience, once you become aware of the response of this universal presence, you will never be the same. You're going to feel a love and a connection and a sense of security that is greater than anything you have felt on an earthly level. This is this also helped me to believe that this is, uh, I consider this a very loving presence as well. The laws work for everyone alike. Everyone. The law of gravity works for everyone, right? Successful people are using these mental and spiritual laws. They just may not realize they are doing so. And guess what? You are using, all of you listening, you are using these laws all of the time, whether you realize it or not. Only you are most likely not using them for the purpose and intention that you desire consciously. You know, how, how many times have you attracted things into your life that you feel you did nothing to deserve and you say, why did this happen? Well, I teach that these laws actually are very simple. The actual principles and the techniques that relate to the laws are surprisingly simple. We humans complicate it. Let's use the law of gravity as an example. We do not need to have a vast knowledge of the laws of physics to understand how gravity works. All we need to know is if we step off a tall building, we'll fall. We know that if we align ourselves with this law correctly, we won't have any mishaps. And it's exactly the same with the mental and spiritual laws. If we align ourselves with them correctly, we won't have mishaps. We will instead experience joyful results in our life. So how do we align ourselves with it? We connect with this power, with this creative force of the universe within through the channel of our subconscious minds, through our thoughts and our feelings. Now, the subconscious mind is the most fantastic computer you could ever imagine. It keeps our heart beating, our lungs breathing. It has a perfect memory of every cell in our body. It has also recorded and stored everything that we have ever heard, said, felt, and experienced. And unfortunately, that includes all of the faulty beliefs and the negative patterns from others that we have acquired from the time, probably from the time we were very young and through our lifetime. So our thoughts and our feelings, our deepest beliefs, those are the key to connecting with the power that responds to our desires. But first, we must break through and overcome the negative thought patterns and beliefs that we have acquired since childhood. Now, here's a difference between our subconscious and a computer. We can't delete anything from the subconscious mind. And guess what? It's not necessary to do so. Oh, my students are so happy when they, they realize they don't have to, to, to get rid of all the negative thoughts and all of the past history. No. In order to shift our consciousness, we create a new dominant thought. A new dominant thought. See, the subconscious doesn't like to change, and it will create resistance. And we know that from, from attempts to change a, change a habit. But there are techniques and methods for influencing the subconscious in a way that does not create argument. I, I label this friendly persuasion. We gently shift the consciousness to create a new dominant thought in the mind. And that's the key. The dominant thought is the key. So the dominant thought in our conscious and our subconscious is what determines our circumstances. Why do we attract those things we don't desire? Well, those results are the outcropping of the thoughts and impressions that are established in your mind subconsciously. So, so we must shift our consciousness to a new dominant thought, to a new awareness. And when we do so, we then open ourselves to the influence of that creative power of the universe, which I like to call our invisible means of support. Just know that the subconscious records everything. Everything you've ever heard or said or felt, whether you were conscious of it or not. And often the more casual words are the ones that drop into the subconscious more easily and are accepted because you're not monitoring them or refuting them. That's important. Listen to your casual words and you'll, you'll know what your subconscious mindset is. Now, here, here's an analogy, if I could share, that my students love. Um, with regard to manifesting our desires and by creating agreement between the conscious and subconscious minds. Think of the conscious mind as the husband, the assertive male aspect of mind. And the subconscious is the female receptive aspect of mind. 
the husband impregnates the wife. And when the subconscious, the wife becomes impregnated, I like that word impregnated, when the subconscious becomes impregnated with the new seed thought, the new idea, then from this union, children are born. Those children are your answered prayers, your desired results. So it is through this union, through this marriage of the conscious and the subconscious minds, when they both agree on an idea, that the idea will become manifest. So what we now what we need to do, we need to teach the husband how to impregnate the wife. <laughs> we make a decision with our conscious mind. We use our conscious mind to instill this idea into the subconscious until it is accepted. And once the seed has been accepted in the soil of mind, it will grow and manifest just as the seed planted in the ground will become a plant or a flower. First, we do our job and we plant the seed. We nurture the soil with water and sunshine. You know what the water and sunshine is? The subconscious, positive thoughts and expectation. That's the water and sunshine for the subconscious. Then we turn the job over to universal mind, to the creative forces. We can relax and let go. Our manifestation will come. There is no such thing as half pregnant. Our baby will be born. Now, from this foundation I've given you, I would like you to just contemplate the message. I want you to come to a clear understanding that you do not carry the burden of manifestation on your shoulders. You have at your disposal the creative, the greatest force in the entire universe waiting to do your bidding if you will just do your part to apply the rules. The only thing that's important is to just know the system works and use it. So someone, someone once asked Henry Ford um, what electricity was, and he answered, Madam, it just is. Use it. That's it. Just use it. I love that. I love how you freed us all from that burden. You know, when we talk about manifestation, you know, mm -hmm. we attach effort mm -hmm. to it. And thank you for freeing us from that, you know, and, and showing us that perfect analogy of it's simple it's there for us to use which is incredible we're, we're going to talk more about that too a little bit later i love it can you uh can you tell me why you say that affirmations may not bring us results well i think everyone kind of knows that they they've used affirmations and they wonder why they don't get results now i'm not saying affirmations don't work affirmations are a powerful tool but we do know that, I, I don't know, I'm guessing for 80% of the people probably don't get results from their affirmations or they don't get them consistently. I don't even teach about affirmations in the beginning of my program for, the, for, for these reasons, for reasons I'm about to share. We don't learn about affirmations until lesson two of the, of the Feel Free to Prosper program because in that material, there is much to learn about the different types of affirmations and how to compose them, how to use them, when to use them, and why they would not get results. In the first lesson, I do give my students two affirmations that I specifically composed, but that's for the purpose of speeding the absorption process by the mind, and, and, but there's no study. They don't compose and they don't study affirmations until later. And my teachings about affirmations are based really on my 30 years of study. And a lot of that information that many of, I'm sorry to say that many of the modern gurus don't seem to address. I spent decades studying the subtleties of the subconscious. And my teachers were the most brilliant minds in the area of mental and spiritual science and, and also clinical hypnosis. Even though I never became a hypnotherapist, I, I, I really credit the um, hypnosis area with um, my knowledge of the subconscious. And, you know, people don't get results from affirmations, and, and there's a good reason. And there are even people that have come to me who have been studying the mind stuff for years and professionals, PhDs, hypnosis professionals, not just lay people. Why don't they get results? Because they don't really understand how the subconscious mind works, the subtleties, the subtleties. And they don't know how to address the resistance of the subconscious because the subconscious will resist. It's, a, it's supposed to be static. Remember I said earlier, it keeps the lungs uh, breathing and a heart beating. It's supposed to be static, but it wasn't supposed to be taking in all of the negative uh, situations from our life. So here, here's an example about resistance. If there is a mindset, if you have a mindset or a thought pattern of lack established in your subconscious and you were to apply 
the types of affirmations that are generally re recommended, here's what happens. Okay, your subconscious has an established pattern of lack. You might use an affirmation, an affirmation such as I am wealthy or I am prosperous. And believe it or not, there are a lot of gurus out there who will tell you to do that. But do you know what happens? Your subconscious knows you're lying. It resists. You feel that you're lying. You look around at the appearances and you say, yeah, right. Who am I kidding? So now, <laughs> Aaron, what are you focused on now more? <laughs> now what are you focused on? Yeah, exactly. You're focused more on lack. Yeah. Now, because you are now more focused on lack, circumstances will be perpetuated. They may even get worse. I'm sorry to tell you. If you don't use the affirmations correctly, your condition could get worse. It reminds me of don't think of a white elephant. <laughs> so you see the subconscious, as we said, doesn't like to change. That part of the mind doesn't reason. It just accepts input as an order. And once it accepts, accepts a mindset or a thought pattern, it will resist any effort to change it. Now, if you give it information that it doesn't accept, that doesn't compute with the current you know, program, it will argue. It will do everything it can to maintain the status quo. And then you may get the opposite of, of what you want. So the answer, the whole solution lies in not creating an argument or resistance in the subconscious mind. That's why in the first lesson, I teach very gentle techniques, techniques that very gently persuade the subconscious to shift and accept the new prosperous idea without creating resistance. That's the key. The key to change is not creating the resistance in the subconscious. What people don't realize is that affirmations will not be effective until you have tilled the soil of the mind first. And once the subconscious soil is tilled, it will accept the seeds that you plant. Otherwise, it won't. That's why I don't teach the affirmations until later, a couple of weeks into the program. By then, the students have tilled the soil of the mind with other techniques, such as certain words and other techniques that we use to softly. Dr. Joseph Murphy, my great teacher, I was very blessed to have known Dr. Murphy, but he used to say, we have to lull. It's almost like a lullaby for the subconscious. We have to lull the subconscious into acceptance. I love that, that image. And then, voila. Now you can learn and understand how affirmations work and how to choose the right kinds of affirmations and compose them in a way that will create the results. Then you're doing your mental gardening. So I knew from the beginning of Feel Free to Prosper and from the wonderful results my students were getting that it was obvious that the universe had blessed me with a very powerful key, a missing key to the manifestation process. And you should also know, this is very interesting. People find this fascinating, that affirmations are not just one breed or one type. There are many types of affirmations and different ways to use them. And if you don't use them correctly, as they said, you may get the opposite of what you want. And believe it or not, this is, this is very interesting. Even the way you were brought up, whether you accepted parental authority or not as a child, that can determine whether certain types of affirmations will work for you. Whether, for instance, whether your subconscious will accept those that are worded in the first person or the second person. First person would be I am. Second person would be you are. So your subconscious may accept certain types of affirmations based on your upbringing. And I think that's really fascinating. <laughs> that's amazing. And, you know, you don't think of that when you know, we've been trained to, you know, affirmations, affirmations, how many times have we heard about using them? And I think there is so much mystery to those details that you're talking about. You know, it's specific to each person mm -hmm. and their history and their gardening that they need to do, which I love that, um, that analogy. So thank you for that. Who doesn't want to do some gardening and make everything clean and beautiful? Yeah, and grow flowers instead of weeds. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Can you um can you tell me why we shouldn't try to create success? What do you mean when you say that trying will never get us there? That's true. T trying will never get you to success. This is amazing. There is a law that nobody ever talks about. And again, I just feel blessed that I just have been exposed to so many wonderful things that have changed my life and that I'm now using to help others change their lives. But there's a law that nobody talks about. Did you know there's a law called the law of reversed effort? Did you ever hear of it, Erin? 
I have not heard of that, no. The law of reversed effort. It states that the harder you try to do something, the less chance you have of achieving it. You see, trying implies a negative. It suggests to the mind that you may not accomplish. There's only one time I ever heard an entity speak about that. And I say entity, and you'll know why in a moment. <laughs> Remember Star Wars? Absolutely. Yoda in Star Wars recognized this truth when he said wisely, quote, do or do not, there is no try. Happen to remember that? Absolutely. I can't believe it. It He's the only one. (laughs) Yoda is the only one I ever heard express the law of reverse effort. (laughs) With all the great minds out there and modern teachers and metaphysicians and uh, nobody ever talks about that law, but it's an important law. The law of reserve, remember that. The harder you try to do something, the less chance you have of achieving it. We plant our seeds in preparation. You like the gardening? We're going to continue with gardening. We plant our seeds in preparation. We want our desired result to grow and manifest just as the seed planted in the ground becomes a plant or a flower. So we first do our job and plant our seeds. Again, we nurture the soil with positive thoughts and expectation. Then we turn the job over to universal mind. Remember I said we can relax and let go. Our manifestation will come. Here's a simplistic, you know, I I wrote an article once. uh, I'm trying to think of the name of my own article here. Um, um, forget, Forget the how and enjoy the wow. Do that I now. love that. I love that. <laughs> Forget the how and enjoy the wow and do that now. It's not our job to know how. It's our, our job to plant the seeds. And it's the job of our, our universal partner. That's the how belongs to that to the universal presence. Here's a simplistic, here's a very simple example of how this works. Did you ever replace your keys or another object and you try and try to figure out where it is, but you can't? The moment yeah. you're, then the moment your attention is somewhere else, you stop thinking about it and you stop forcing the answer, and suddenly the answer pops into your mind. I'm Definitely. sure that's happened to most of us. Yeah. It's even happened where that has happened to me, where I'll I'll misplace something and I'll just forget about it, and then suddenly I just walk over to the drawer, to the cabinet, wherever it happens to be, without even thinking about it. I just, it's like this this presence just takes me right over to where it is. And, of course, that's a simplistic example that can happen in a much broader area of our business and our lives. Well, you know, this, this, is, this is an important concept. Did you ever have an important problem to solve? And you tried everything to find a solution but to no avail. Then you're, from sheer exhaustion, you give up. Suddenly the answer appears. <laughs> Definitely. I've had that happen on more than one occasion. For well, sure. because we released it, we finally gave up and we released. There is another principle that's related to this called that it's the spiritual um, principle of release that, that, that I teach. But we might say, I have a quote that um, I think explains it all, my own personal quote. Between the time to plant, this will help you remember this, between, between the time to plant and the time to sow is a time to let go. Mm. And then you won't be trying I hope everybody wrote that down because that's so important. It's the in-between, right? The in-between. I love that. Mm -hmm. Between the time to plant and the time to sow is a time to let go. Stop trying. Just do or do not. There is no try. And you're our manifesting Yoda today. Absolutely. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Um, can you tell us, I know you say that um, people's jobs, clients, and even investments, you know, everyone uses those terms when they mm-hmm. define their source of income. Mm-hmm. But why are these actually not our source of income? And what is our source of income? Okay. I want you to pay attention, everyone, because this is extremely important. So this is, I'm going to share a very important component of my teachings with you. This is such a valuable lesson, and if you will grasp it, these are all valuable lessons, but this one has got a lot of power. 
If you will grasp this, it will change your financial life, and it's going to change your entire life if you broaden your understanding beyond just the, the monetary. Because, you know, abundance, just like I say, feel free to prosper, prosperity. That's not just about finances. Prosperity is not just about money. Neither is abundance. Awakening to your abundance. Abundance is, is, is all of the, the wonderful aspects of life. Okay, here it is. Pay attention now. It's really important. I have seen students of mine that just draft, I mean, strikingly and, and just practically overnight have, have their lives change and, and business situations change just from grasping this concept. Your business is not your source of income. Your business, your job, your customers, your clients, your investments, as you said, Aaron, and, and your spouse, not your spouse, your spouse isn't either. <laughs> None of these are your source of income. There's only one source of income. The universe, God, divine presence, infinite spirit, formless substance, whatever your concept is of that universal source of, of supply. The universe is your source of supply. God is your source of supply. That is the only source of your supply. All of those other avenues we mentioned are channels for your supply, but they are not the source of your supply. Got that? When you truly understand and know this, then you will open the pipeline to the unlimited channels of supply that exist for you. And there are indeed unlimited channels through which your good can come to you. The expected, the unexpected, along with your expected channels. But you can only become open and receptive to these free-flowing channels when you put your complete reliance on the true source. Let me give you, again, a simplistic analogy. Let's use the uh, analogy of a kitchen faucet. The faucet is not the source of water. It's only a channel. If that channel is broken or closed, then there are an infinite number of other channels through which we can get our water. Right? So when you look at your true source of supply, it will become the senior partner in your business and in your life, and you'll prosper. You will have an abundant life. You'll be in the right place, whether it's in your present situation or even a better one. You'll be led, guided to a better one. You'll be at peace. So obviously, there are other lessons to learn or, or speed, you know, to, to speed our journey on the path to prosperity and abundance. But I can't emphasize enough how important this one is. Yeah, let me give you an example of my own. But I owned a renowned, as I said, a renowned special event company, corporate and convention markets. 9-11 had a tremendous impact on our industry, as it did with, with many others. And I was initially, I admit, I wasn't teaching back then, you know, but still I, I, was, I was learning. I had spent years learning these laws, but I was initially affected by the mass mind thinking. But then a wonderful teacher came out of the blue and reminded me that I had to focus on truth principles and know that my business of 20 years was not my source of income, my source of supply. And of course, I knew what I had to do. And when I did, channels began to open in totally unexpected areas some that were totally unrelated to the regular type of clients in my business, and money flowed in. The universe took care of me and provided for me. And then my business rebounded beyond my dreams in ways that allowed me to then fulfill my life purpose by following my heart path, which is what I'm doing here today. That's amazing. That's amazing. And, you know, I don't know a single person who hasn't had a struggle with the channels their own channels at one time or another is the best way I can use to describe it. But opening yourself up like that to infinite channels mm -hmm. is it's just a whole other way of looking at it that I think will absolutely help so many of our listeners today. Well, it will help them tremendously and understand that all that universal power wants is your acknowledgement. It's just saying, here, I'm here for you. Acknowledge me. Connect with me. I'll take care of you. It's really not that complicated. You know, I watched the commercial on TV for one of the wireless phone companies, and they, it's man with the children. You know, have you seen those commercials? Really funny. Yes. It always always ends up all, it's not complicated. It's really simple. And I keep thinking of my laws whenever I see the commercial, you know. Yes, it's simple. We don't have to complicate it. We're so used to complicating things. It's just nice to, to be reminded and, yeah. you know, take away all of that complication and really bring it back to those um, 
very about our strong principles that you're talking about today. Too bad our parents, uh, you know, weren't given a manual when we were born. <laughs> right? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, can you tell us what words we're habitually using that are preventing our success and how can we change them? How can you change them? Okay. Well, as I said earlier, the foundation of my Feel Free to Prosper teachings is the word. So I'm going to spend some time on, on this subject, okay? It's important to realize that every word we speak, every thought we think, and every emotion we feel is recorded in the subconscious. Now, there are two ways to impact the subconscious through repetition or with enough faith or emo emotional impact. The subconscious will accept our, our words as a command, and it will create subjectively. It will attract circumstances, conditions, people to ensure the fulfillment of our, quote, our order. Now, even words spoken casually can bypass the conscious mind and drop into the subconscious and take root. It's been said that the subconscious mind cannot take a choke. So e seemingly harmless expressions, if accepted by the subconscious, can produce undesirable result results in our lives. On the other hand, positive, life-enhancing, prosperous, success-oriented, abundant wor abundance words will produce results that correspond and can bring about astonishing results. It could also turn situations around dramatically. So repeating successful, prospering words will ensure success and prosperity in your work, your business, and your life. Prospering words will open up the channels for income from both expected and unexpected sources. We, we can't have it both ways. Please understand this. We can't have it both ways. We cannot want one thing and express its opposite and expect the powerful laws of the universe to work on our behalf. You cannot claim to feel prosperous and then state there's no way to pay your bills. That very statement will ensure that the ways to pay those obligations will not get through to you because those words have now become your law. It beautifully represents the law of lack. It's your self-fulfilled prophecy. And the law never stops working for you. And you can't stop using it. But you can keep using it to manifest what you don't want. Or you can learn to use it with purpose and in alignment with the abundance that universally exists for everyone, including each and every one of you listening. Your words are powerful. We always forget that, I think, when we're wrapped up in telling our stories and sharing you know, sometimes our woes, quote unquote, with other people, and you forget, you forget the power of those words. And I think that's such an important thing to remember um, as you go on your day-to-day -day business and you, you almost have to break yourself of, of those negative habits with words and really, you know, sort of respect their power. You have to, you have to. You know, I, I, when I did private mentoring, I would have someone call me up to inquire about mentoring, and I would listen for five minutes on the phone, and I'd make a little check marks and notes on paper. And there was one woman, as an example, I remember her clearly. In five minutes of listening to her, she used the word struggle about 25 times, struggling or struggled. I've had people that constantly use the word, it's tough, it's hard, afraid. And those words are habitual. But that's your mindset. You listen to somebody for five minutes, and you know, as a teacher, as a mentor, I'm my radar is tuned into that. Obviously, I could tell you exactly what the, that in that five minutes, I know what their subconscious mindset is, and what their problem is. And one of the most absolutely powerful things that you could ever do to create abundance is to change your words. I love it, and I know that that I took a little note to myself as a reminder, thanks for that one, <laughs> because I know I'm going to uh, just keep that in my, you know, at the top of my mind and remember that as I go in my day-to-day -day life. So important, so important. Well, let me ask you a question for business. How, how many times have you talked in the last few years, not you personally, I mean to the listeners, I want you all to ask your, yourselves, how many times have you talked about the recession, about the economic climate? past few years how many times have you expressed that there's no business there's no uh, the clients aren't spending money how many times have you talked in such a way that you are creating the very thing that you don't want 
just know that, yes, the words that you are habitually using are creating your reality. Always be aware of that. Thank you, Marilyn, because that that one thing, I know everything you've said, shared with us already is amazing, but that one thing is going to have such an amazing effect, and I think it's going to be passed on and passed on and passed on and passed on and really change so many people's lives. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. Can you um, share with us, I know this is a very exciting thing you're going to share with us, but what is the single most immediate thing we can do right now in this moment to increase our income? Well, you probably already have a clue. But (laughs) (laughs) if you're listening to me, yeah, what do you think is the the single most immediate thing that you can do to increase your finances and start attracting money? And most people, you know, wouldn't wouldn't really think of this. I don't think people out there teaching how to be successful and prosperous. I never, heard, I've never heard anyone really say it this succinctly. The single most immediate thing that you can do, I gave it away, is to change your words. Change the words that you speak to reflect those spoken by a successful person. Words that represent what you want in life eliminate any words or phrases from your vocabulary that represent the opposite of what you want. I have um, another quote. You can quote me on this. My students love this. If you don't want it, don't say it. Simple. If you don't want it, don't say it. Now, you can begin this right now, this very moment, right now. When you leave this call, you can begin this. Changing your thoughts usually cannot be done as quickly or as easily, but by changing your words, You'll be well on the way to also changing those undesirable thought patterns and changing your life and finances. Your words have tremendous power. Believe it. Do not doubt this for a moment. I know I've said this <laughs> several times in the last few minutes, but it's important to, to have this, uh, instill this in your mind. Open sesame. Think of open sesame. How many times today have you said aloud or to yourself, even casually, I can't afford Did that I hit think, home with some people? Oh my God! It <laughs> yeah, I, I, could, I could see the. I could. I know they're nodding out there. Yeah, they're definitely nodding. I'm nodding here in my in my office right now. I'm nodding. <laughs> but okay. you know, I think it's it's that can't word, right? We what? get so attached to that can't word, and really, you know, to me, it's a four letter word. So mm-hmm. I'm, yes, you know, that's a good point. You've you've changed um, some great thoughts in my mind, you've really sparked some great movement for me. And I know that I'm not alone. I know our listeners are writing down furiously notes and, you know, thinking of all the things that they say so that they know not to say them. And so I love that. Um, I'm going to give another you've given tip. Us so much. You just remind me of another tip. Oh, good. Take out, the, take out the word enough from your vocabulary. You don't want enough. You want plenty. Mm. Plenty. That's that's what you want to instill in your mind, the thought of plenty, not enough. Why just have enough? There should be plenty. Simple. As the guy says on the commercial, it's not complicated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not well, complicated. I love that. I love the simplicity. Marilyn, I, I can't thank you enough for these amazing things that you've shared with us today. I know that I always get curious about everything that's possible for the other listeners with me on this call today. Can you take a couple of minutes to share with us some of the amazing turnarounds you've seen from people who have applied the principles that you teach? All right. I'm going to share, well, all, you know, all the manifestations, all of the results, my my students get, it's like, you know, I don't have favorite children. You know, they're all my favorite children. And all the manifestations are wonderful, but there, there's some, what I like to do if I, I share some examples, I, I like to share people from different walks of life. So I have um, a young woman who's, uh, she was a single mom at the time and um, on commission. Yeah, and then I also will tell you about someone who's employed because so many people are looking for their ideal position. And I have, um, if I have time, I have a couple of really, really off, off the wall, really exciting ones that are just very unusual. Um, not more or less important than any other manifestation, but just really some of those that just strike you as being way out in the ozone, that totally unexpected. And I think you'll find them uh, kind of fascinating. 
Um, Minerva was a 24, a few years ago, she was a 24 year old California realtor, single with a young son. And uh, she started, um, she took my program, started doing the lessons, and she had just amazing results. And here's what's significant is this was at the height of the economic recession in the U.S., which of course traveled beyond domestic, but this is when the real estate market had pretty much bottomed out and everybody was complaining. And uh, you, you know what I'm talking about. Um, and she started doing the lessons and just, she said it was from the simplicity of the first lesson. Lesson She closed three transactions, opened two new ones. She received a, a lot of the market analysis assignments from banks, which pay agents fees. And then she said, that's not all. I, she acquired four approved ready to buy buyers. And when she wrote, she said, all this is starting the lessons and all of this happening at the height of the economic recession in the U.S. And you could read a little bit more about her when you go over to the presentation page. But so she, that's a single woman who was on commission, who depended on commission for her livelihood. And then there was um, a story, uh, oh, Allison, oh, she, she was, was pretty amazing. She had come from Canada with her husband. Her husband had started a new business and she did not even have a work visa when I first met her. And she started the lessons and she was able to get a weekend job and they had a young son Then she got a weekend job and then that, that tied her over. And then she was ready for a really good job. And she applied the lessons and got a job that was wonderful. She also learned to drive. She had been afraid to drive all, all her life. She learned to drive. So you get a lot of surprise, you know, from these prosperity laws, you get a lot of surprise healings in many areas of your life. But she had gotten a job and said, you know, I'm ready for a better job. And she said, but I'm torn. She said, I, you know, I, I want to go back and get a master's degree. But, you know, we have the family and I contribute to the family income. We have a young son. I, I do need to work. But I'd also, I, I don't know what to do because I'd also like to go back to school and get the master's degree. Within two weeks of doing the program again, she attracted a job that paid for her master's degree, <laughs> which was wonderful. And the job was close to home. It was very, every, it was perfect. She came back to me about, oh, a year and a half ago and she said, Marilyn, I'm ready now for the ultimate dream job. I have my master's degree. I want more salary. I want a senior level position, a leadership position where I'm really helping people. And again, the significance is that this was still during the economic recession where everyone, you know, the news, everything, the sky was falling and, you know, layoffs, corporate layoffs, everything. And she wanted the dream job. Two weeks later, she got that job. She was the national organization. And she was shortly after that promoted to senior vice president. And that's Allison's story. Yeah, that's, it was just wonderful. It's, 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 you know, like clockwork, like Dr. Murphy used to say to me, he said, Marilyn, do the homework and you'll get the results. And that's what I tell my students. You just Follow the rules, and it works. Now, here's the, if I may read this, I'm going to read, because he, he's, um, Michael is a copywriter and a ghostwriter in England, and he sent this to me, and it was so shocking. We talked later, but I couldn't, I couldn't tell you. He, he writes so well, I'd rather, it's, it's so fun the way he, he sent me this uh, testimony, and you read it on, on the, the page when you go to the, the, to the presentation page. Um, I'm just going to read his testimony, testimonial, if I may, because it's, it's really fun. He got my attention with this title when he wrote to me. He said, Marilyn's teachings subtly influence events at Buckingham Palace. That certainly got my attention. And he says, Marilyn boldly states that with her teachings, you will have the universe on speed dial. Well, that was interesting because I've been getting used to the exact opposite slowness. <laughs> In the first week of applying Marilyn's lessons for a ghostwriting project, I confirmed a forward by Prince Philip and a dedication by Lady Soames, the daughter of Winston Churchill. The universe loves speed. Wow. The palace response almost immediately followed by Lady Soames' decision was like a double sonic boom, a cosmic cry to me saying, this stuff really works. <laughs> he really has a way with words. A week later, the speed... <laughs> Is that fun? A week later, the speed dial went crazy. I just finished writing my feel free to prosper affirmations when there was a knock at the door. Manuscript back from the palace with agreed forward, brilliantly composed by Prince Philip, general rejoicing, Michael Warden, 
Isle of Portland, UK. And we talked afterwards and yeah, he, he was, his business was at a standstill and that just total turnaround, total turnaround, get Prince Philip to do the forward for this project. Pretty amazing. Oh my God. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Now, oh my goodness. Do we, have, do we have time? Uh, I want to be sure of your time. Do we have time for me to share another very striking one? Yes, please do. Please do. Let's go from Buckingham Palace to a lovely couple in Nebraska, real pe- real folk here in Nebraska, in the U.S., Karen and Harry. She wrote to me, hi, Marilyn, three years ago, my husband received a letter stating he owed $20,000 to the IRS. The IRS, for those of you uh, international, is the Eternal Revenue Service. He was unemployed at the time this happened. He didn't file a couple of years. He didn't file a couple of years, but we could not understand how they figured he owed $20,000 and he was only a truck driver. We knew we needed an attorney to help us, but we didn't have the money to hire one. We saw on the IRS site that they listed attorneys free of charge, so we got one, and it's been a long road of court hearings, bank statements, paycheck stubs, month after month, because Harry's working now. There was another hearing last month, and they said that the final decision, whether they would take the offer the attorney presented or demand all of the money, was to be made in April, which was four months from now. They were waiting to see how much Harry made this year. We ordered your Feel Free to Prosper program on Friday. My husband started the course on Sunday. I'm writing this on Wednesday. Here it is just three days later, and he received a call from his attorney today. After three years, the IRS realized they made a mistake and Harry only owes $700, (laughs) which will be paid out of this year's refund, so nothing out of pocket. $20,000 hanging over our our head to the IRS for three years, and now we are free, just like that. Thanks, Marilyn, for creating this program and sharing it with the world, Karen and Harry. The IRS. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. The universal power is, is... is more that universal presence is more powerful than any government agency than any court in the land even the irs <laughs> <laughs> right everybody can relate to that story oh my goodness that's you amazing think so? that amazing. is pretty amazing and i got i got yeah. one today today before our call today i received this i won't use any names because i i just got this and i haven't gotten permission to use it and it's probably better to keep it private. Uh, anyway, this is really short. Um, Marilyn, I would like to thank you so much for your teaching, the exercises that my wife and I had done. With the exercises my wife and I had done, we were able to save our house from foreclosure. We manifested $10,340.28, <laughs> right to the penny, and were able to wire this money to our mortgage company. I think the mortgage company was even shocked because they had to let us know that our house would be sold on 617 each time we called them. Thank you so much for everything. Since we manifested the $10,340.28, I am now focused on our 25th wedding anniversary, which is in June. We have already priced some cruises. Wow. Uh, I, I love that. You can get thousands of testimonials. They come in all the time. I made a deal with the universe. I said, universe, if, if, I stop, if my students stop getting results, I stop teaching. And I've been teaching for 10 years and still teaching. <laughs> I was going to say, there's no end in sight. I hope no end no, in sight. I don't see any well, end in sight. Yeah. Well, Marilyn, I mean, what I get excited about and the reason I do these calls is I like to help people take control of their life, right? So mm-hmm. I know that there's so much more to learn from you and that this was just such a tiny piece that you sh- shared with us today, which was immense that um, I asked Marilyn to create a special offer for everybody who's on the call today. And I highly encourage you to go to Marilyn's special offer right now to experience it for yourself. Just click on the special offer button that's on the page and it will take you right there. Marilyn, can you let everybody know what they'll find there? All right. I'm going to to let them know, first of all, that this is not, that what you call the special offer is not a special promotional program or product that was done as, as for this for this interview. I'm not offering a special product. This is the flagship original Feel Free to Prosper program, the original two-month program that has been bringing all of these thousands of results for several years. And 
I knew that when I did these interviews, I knew that this is the way, what I had to do. I had a chat with the universe. It's the flagship program. That's it. There's, there's nothing higher than that program. And that is the two-month program, which includes all of the Feel Free to Prosper lessons, the four major lessons. There are two bonus lessons and eight audio sessions that you'll listen to once a week. And the beauty of the program is, you know, I'm, if I might say so, I'm known for taking these esoteric laws and really teaching them in very simple form and making the process very simple. So it's not labor intensive, 15 minutes a day. You just need 15 minutes a day. Just follow the, the schedule, the calendar, do what it tells you to do, and you will get your results. And at two weeks, I promise two weeks unexpected income. That is the norm for my average student. It might take some people a little longer. That's okay. You may have a lot of layers to go through subconsciously. If it takes you three weeks or a month or two months after a lifetime or years of, of what you don't want, that's just a drop in the bucket. So this is the flagship program that I'm offering to your subscribers, to your listeners. Along with that, I'm including one of my, what is considered one of my most compelling programs. It's a call on gratitude. It's how to use the powerful principle of gratitude to attract what you don't yet have, which of course is not the common way gratitude is. We, we all know that we need to be uh, grateful for our blessings. That's a given. But we can also use gratitude as an umbilical cord to the universe for creating, for speeding to us those results that we don't yet have. And I teach you how in that, in that um, it's a three and a half hour call, but I think three hour call, but it's, it's definitely packed with, with, with information that's going to be life changing. I do recommend that if you purchase the program that you listen to the gratitude program after you finish the Feel Free to Prosper program, it's very important. I, I got this very clearly from the universe when I created Feel Free to Prosper. It's very important that we don't overload or confuse the subconscious. Simplicity is the way to go. So it's best to stay, get your foundation, do the Feel Free to Prosper program, and then at the end of the two months, listen to the gratitude call. And you have a really a complete process there for, for the awakening that you came here for. And who doesn't want that simplicity? And who doesn't have 15 minutes a day to change their lives? You know, I know everyone jokes about not having enough time, but I love the simplicity and the conciseness of that. And, and I know all of our listeners will also love it. So I really, really encourage you all to uh, check out this offer because it's incredible. Um, Marilyn, what are some of the biggest benefits that, that those of us who are going to do your program can expect to experience starting right away and also in the long term when they apply your principles and this program? The answer is what do you want? <laughs> I love that. <laughs> what do you want? That's what you're, you're going to get. Well, you know, let me explain something. The mental and spiritual laws, we need to deal with the mental aspect with the subconscious because the subconscious is our conduit to universal mind, as, as we discussed. That is our conduit. So the, the, the lessons, the techniques are simple. They're simple, but you have to do it. They're easy and simple, but you just have to do them. And when you do that, you are dealing with the mental aspect. But the reason I never became a hypnotherapist and the reason I went further into the studies, into spiritual studies, because I knew that it was not just, the mental was, was not all there was. It's the, it's the combination of the mental and the spiritual. And the true purpose of my teachings, yes, we have to deal with the techniques and, and dealing with the mind and address the subconscious. But if you ask me what is the ultimate goal of my teachings for every student, the ultimate goal of what I'm doing here is to get each of you, each of you who become students, to become aligned with that presence that knows, that has the gifts for you. It has the gifts. In fact, you know, you talk about in law of attraction, they talk about you know what you want and you magnetize it, you think about it and you visualize and you attract it. Well, I, I, I go, I, I think bigger than that because I know that what happened in my own life, what happened in my own life, why I had to write that business memoir was so far beyond anything I could imagine for myself. What I'm telling you is that if you become aligned with that presence, it has gifts for you that are beyond the things that you could even imagine to ask for. You have a destiny. You have your place, your true place in life. 
And my greatest gift would be to help you become aligned, connected with that presence that knows how to bring you where you are supposed to be and bring you what you're supposed to have. I love that. I love that. And I, you know, I know that I already know, like I feel certain, 100% certain that I'm going to have personal change from even what you've shared with us on the call. So I can just imagine when you're doing those principles, the simplicity, and really, like you said, not just reading them, but doing them, the changes would be just magnified and amazing. Um, and I hate I hate to have us finish because there's, I know there's so much more for you to give, give us, but I, it's our time. It's our time to be finished. And Marilyn, I just would love for you to share any final thoughts with myself and the listeners today. Well, yeah, you found out I'm not a woman of few words. <laughs> yeah. um, I'd like to share, I'd like to close with two of my favorite quotes, which are not mine. Uh, I could not have send, said them as eloquently, but these are two that really just represent my life and what I, I like to give to my, my audiences and my students. The first is, success is not to be measured by how much material wealth is possessed, but whether you are able to create at will what you need. And that's Padmahansa Yogananda. You might know him from uh, the author of Autobiography of a Yogi. But that's my definition of wealth. Success is not to be measured by how much material wealth is possessed, but whether you are able to create at will what you need. Perfect. And a final thought, I love this, from Ray, Rad Ray Bradbury. Sometimes, well, actually, it's, I've heard it sometimes you have to, but I think the accurate quote is, first you jump off the cliff and you build your wings on the way down. Mm. That's about trust. I love that. That's about trusting the universe. And actually, that's what I'm asking my, your listeners uh, to do, to trust and put faith in my teachings in the Feel Free to Prosper program. Jump off the cliff. You'll grow your wings on the way down and let me know. I want to know about your wings. <laughs> you heard it, everyone. Jump off the cliff. It's time. It's time. It's time. Um, absolutely. Time Just click on the special offer button that's on the page, and it will take you right there. You're not going to regret it. Take the time. Read the teachings and do the teachings. Thank you so much for sharing everything with us today, Marilyn. I know I personally got so much from this call, and I am in no way alone. Our listeners got a gift today not just this fantastic offer, but your time and your teachings. I really appreciate you, and I look forward to our next call together. Thank you so much, Erin. You have beautiful energy. You're just really uh, a delight. Thank you very much. Thank you. And everyone, until the next call, thank you so much. Bye-bye.